Oh, shit, we're live. Hey, if you are tuning in right now, you're watching the premiere episode of our film and TV podcast, Screenplay, which means you got the dick message. Yeah. Ooh, wait, is there a dick message? No, <laughs> it's, it's a Guardians reference. Oh. oh. I am joined oh, today. Oh, the dick message, yes. The dick message. I'm the dick wait. message. Oh, let me just have another sip of soda and I'll be away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. It's like four o'clock in Texas. I'm joined by the lovely Meg Turney. Oh, hi. The lovelier John Reisinger. Oh, yeah. And the awfully looking Chris Damaris. I'm no. lovely. <laughs> second awfully. place isn't bad. I'll take second place. <laughs> and uh, on our side in the video store, we've got uh, Mr. Joey Aranda. What? <laughs> Never forget. Whoopi. Whoopi oh, Sister Act. <laughs> Joy was saying earlier that he's going to try to slowly uh, fill all the racks of the shelf with Sister Act. JJ tapes. was saying earlier how he wanted to ruin Joey's joke by telling everybody what the joke <laughs> is right off the bat. Damn you. Challenge accepted. Nice. You nice. got him. You got I him. I did. I got him. Now he can't do it anymore. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is fun. Uh, it's really great to have you guys. We're going to talk a little bit about television later. We're going to talk about Game of Thrones doing some recasting. We're going to talk about Mike Tyson's got a new animated show, um, Big Bang Theory and some stuff. But right now, we're going to start with some movies. Yes. Yay. Movies. Yay. Nice. So one thing I can't stand <laughs> are false trailers. Right. Whenever a trailer sums itself up like it's something that it's really not. Right. I can't stand that. Yeah, uh -huh. you, you're okay I with it. I have mixed emotions with it because there are movies where it makes sense, like the Hunger so? Games. Okay. So for the first Hunger Games, they only showed footage before they went into the arena because they didn't want to spoil the arena mm -hmm. for people who hadn't read the book. And I agreed with that. I thought that was cool, even though it misrepresented what the movie is because most of it is spent in the arena or the focus of the movie is in the arena. Mm -hmm. I felt like it it fit. And also uh, think about like Inbetweeners 2, they have their trailer that just came out and they said none of our best jokes are in this trailer because we want you to actually laugh in the theater. So yeah. like. That makes sense. It, well, it's something like the trailer for Avatar, right? Which is just like, you, you watch the trailer, like, well, that was a good movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I hate that. Movie. Yeah. See, I hate that when I feel like I know the whole thing. The teaser for Avatar looked so awesome. It's like, well, that was, I, I pretty much saw it. movie wasn't awful. Yeah. It was a fun time. I mean, you just had to turn your brain off. I kinda. liked all of it. I mean, it was good. I, I, I mean, I also love Dances with Wolves. And every other movie, and, and every other movie, Pocahontas it's based off of. Movie. Yeah, that was great. But uh, well, more so, we're talking about some movies that are kind of guilty of doing this right now that are uh, coming out, or at least their trailers are online. Uh, first and foremost, we have a Hercules. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're in the trailer for Hercules, starring Dwayne the Rock Johnson, otherwise known as Blaine's best friend. And it's uh, actually Blaine's starring Rick father. Moranis. Blaine's father. <laughs> He just blew Start my mind. <laughs> but no, in the uh, in the trailer, it shows uh, Hercules battling all these mythological creatures, um, like Clash a Hydra, like very Clash of Titans esque. And uh, I've yet to see the movie, but uh, what I've heard, and this is kind of spoilers, but at the same time, we're kind of doing you a favor by letting you know so you don't get too surprised, is that apparently that all takes place like in the first five, ten minutes or so of the movie. Yeah. And it's all just some kid telling these stories about what, who Hercules is supposedly is. But for the most part, he's really just a strong guy. He's just a really strong guy right. in the movie. Huh. Yeah, I mean, that, that can be, for a movie like that, where you actually would probably literally go to see it for, like, the mythological part and the special effects and the action sequences with things like the Chimera and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah that would be, like... If that all ended five minutes into the film and the rest is something else, they'd be like, well, this is a little bit of a switcheroo. Well, because they really, they're really selling the Greek mythology point. Like, me growing up as a kid, like, sixth grade, I was obsessed with Greek mythology, yeah. you know, and I loved the whole idea of the gods. Like, that's the reason I loved the Iliad so much. So when I went to see Troy, that thing was Wolfgang Peterson that directed that. Yeah. Joey? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, when I went to see Troy in theaters and there was no gods in it for yeah. the most part, I was. Uh, it, excuse me, Brad Pitt's naked <laughs> ass was in that movie. But excuse they you. They didn't portray themselves as having like mythological. Oh, uh, all holy Brad That's Pitt's right. naked ass. That's right. I would yeah. hold an altar the to Bible Brad Pitt's naked The Bible spoke of this golden ass. calf ass. A head <laughs> priestess right here next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm the head priestess of Brad Pitt's, Brad Pitt's naked ass. ass. I love it. I want to see that like that. on a necklace around Start here. Start working on the the idol for that. Thank you. Either way, like, you know, like, I think the first time I ever saw a trailer use something was Twister. Um, when they showed Great that, movie. Yeah, when they, uh, Twister is a really good movie. It is. And they showed John DeBont, I think, who directed Speed. That was his movie he did after Speed. Uh, but they showed in the trailer uh, a big tire from, a, like, a tractor slam into the car that they were driving. Yeah. And then it wasn't in the movie. Yeah, it happens. I yeah, mean, that's, but that's scenes being cut. That, that happens. That, I'm not that upset well, by that. Yeah, well, you you see it a lot more now, but at the time, you were like the first time, and then and then Anchorman and stuff are very uh, like their jokes are always different. Yeah, but I feel like That's when I'm in the takes. theater, but when I'm in the theater and they play like this was in the trailer, I'm like, because I've already seen it, I've already laughed yeah, at it. Like I would, I would rather it be a little bit different. It you is know, a double edged sword. And something too, like trailers are cut way before the movie's finished. It's true. And as someone who does editing, it's like, well, a lot of times you decide to cut scenes. Yeah. Way you know at the very end 
where it's like, oh, well, you know, we were well, yeah, it trailer. depends, especially like with things like Comic Con and they, they use dailies like for movies that are nowhere near being done and they cut them together and just so they can say like, hey, look, this movie's coming out in two years. Be excited. You know, uh, and like Guardians, like look at things like Guardians and Transformers. Yeah. If you watch their first trailers versus like the third trailers, like a lot of special effects have been added in color correction. So they're yeah. really releasing things kind of early. King which Kong is, was something like that where the, the early trailer didn't have like people were really let down by how King Kong was looking yeah. in the trailer. And Peter Jackson came out and actually said, like, it's not done. Yeah. It will be better when we go feature. Well, and then, go, and then they were disappointed again when they <laughs> actually the saw movie. the movie. <laughs> the visual effects were, were, were finalized a little bit more. That wasn't a comment there, on the actual film. There are some yeah. bad CGI shots in King Kong. Yeah. I think that but I think the actual feature film quality was I do remember the trailer did look a little unfinished. Mm -hmm. And it's cause like, you know, that's the last stuff to be done. And so with a movie that's so heavily CG, if it you know, you need to get the trailer out. Out, but we're not quite done, so we'll just use what we have. Yeah. I know we're going to get into Guardians a little bit yeah, later. Yeah, we're talking about later in but, the show. But um, I actually went back and looked. Ashley Jenkins was talking about the Who? Guardians trailer. Who? <laughs> uh, and she was talking about how, like, schlubby the trailer looked. And I, you know what, I had to agree. Like, it, I'm glad that it was such a kind of low-key trailer. Yeah, because fine, the movie, schlubby. Because it was just kind of like, eh, there's these dudes, they're in jail at some point, don't know what's happening. It like, didn't tell you anything about the movie. Yeah. And so that was great because then I, was, I had no expectations going in and she said the same thing and, and then it was even better. It's true. It's better when movies kind of exceed your, uh, your expectations. Like a Jurassic Park was like that for me. Well, yeah. like bouncing off what she was saying about the Hunger Games, how like sometimes when trailers lie, it's actually a good thing in that they're abstaining from telling you something. Uh -huh. I always, a good example of that I thought was Hancock. Where they made Han like I'm not going to spoil what it was, but they made Hancock out to be this movie, and then Hancock actually ended up being this movie with the, this whole back end that yeah. they alluded not at all in the marketing. Well, sometimes that works. I think that always wor that works better in a second viewing. A, a lot of times, movies deserve uh, better off from second viewing because the first time you watch it, you're like, "This isn't at all what I thought I was going to watch when yeah. I came to see this movie," and you kind of hate it for it. And then maybe like on home video or in DVD release or whatever later, you watch it again, and you there's no there's no surprises because you know what's going to happen, so you can actually enjoy the movie for what it is. I but I see mm -hmm. I like it sometimes like with uh, Iron Man three they did that with Mandarin. They yeah. changed like they Mandarin is a character in the comics and they portrayed him that way in all the trailers and everything. Mm -hmm. like as being this specific kind of villain. And then when you went and saw the movie, they made a huge twist in the end that they tried really hard to keep secret all the way through. It's true. I mean, it, it is kind of fun to go into a movie not knowing anything about it. Yeah, like, I know, great. Like, I, I saw Eternal Sunshine. Of not the knowing Spotify. anything. I, I, all I knew was like it was a Jim Carrey movie, so mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, this could be an awesome comedy. I'm just going to... Some uh -huh. wacky Jim Carrey. And then it's like, I'm like, this is... What? Well, see, that could go either way. You yeah. could love it because of that, or you could be like, yeah. what the hell is this? <laughs> that was yeah. me with Nightmare Before Christmas. I didn't know it was um, basically an opera almost. Yeah. Like, the first song played, I was like, oh, that's fun. And then they had a little bit of dialogue, and mm. then jumped to the next song. And I was like, they're singing the well, entire and, movie. And, and that's uh, next on the list is another film that's coming out that's showing trailers right now that's guilty of this. I think it's come out in Christmas. is Into the Woods. Yeah. Which is based on, uh, it's a Broadway play. Yes, it is. And uh, so we're, we're watching a little bit of it right now. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's guilty of this is that it's not it doesn't show any of the actual singing. Yeah, it, it, it's playing it like it's a straight film. Right. And uh, Sweeney Todd right. had kind of some backlash from that where they they portrayed the movie like it was just a straight up kind of narrative. And then people, Sweeney Todd is an opera. Yeah. Well, then it found well people some people don't know that. Well, that's what I'm saying is that yeah the uh, the trailer had like all straight dialogue. But if you go watch Sweeney Todd the movie, mm -hmm. it's singing. Even when they're just talking to yeah. each other, they're singing. <laughs> yeah. It. Well, it's weird because like, they're, they're, they're getting er, they're right. getting early buzz for this movie. So, but at the same time, at some point, they're uh, it looks to, fantastic. Yeah. And, it, and if some people have no idea, it's a musical. Production. Right. So you wonder well, how long into the game until they start kind but of. But it's also know. again one of those things where if they show the like all the best parts of the singing, you might not get like that feeling when you yeah. get into the theater, and it's like, oh, but what about Les Mis killing trailer? it right yeah. now. Louis, yeah. Les Mis's trailer was Anne Hathaway singing her it one was. song. It's true. It and was. that just gave me chills. And it maybe, did. But I'm a. She but everyone knows Les Mis. Like, Les Mis is a little bit more well known than Into the Woods, I think. Right. Into I the Woods was a musical. Known. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So I watched the trailer like. Uh, you didn't know Les Mis was a musical? No, no. I'm talking. I watched the trailer like a day or two ago. And I was like, well, that looks cool. No, they're but fairy I had no tale idea it was movie. a musical. Yeah. Interesting. I knew it was a remake. The cast looks great. Yeah. No, it's well, just, do it, we know they're actually singing in the movie? I, I heard they're actually well, singing. I heard they actually took out some of the darker uh, story elements. But they, but well, they yeah, are. It is musical. There was a, they took out stuff about Red Riding Hood and the wolf having a little, like, yeah. some sort of pseudo romance or something. Yeah. I don't know. Pseudo or actual? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, but Anna Kendrick is in it. She actually sings. Right. And I, did I see Amanda Seyfried there? She also sings. I know Meryl Streep's in it, so she, everything she's in is great. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Let's just say that.
Uh, I, we jumped the gun a little bit. We didn't talk about our movie quote. Every uh, every episode, we're going to have a movie quote, and then you guys at home can play along by uh, tweeting at Screenplay if you know the quote. And uh, let's see, Mr. Patrick, or is it Joey? Who do you, who's got this, the screen? That'd be me, sir. Let's hear it. It's uh, Put some ice on it. After that, there's nothing a few beers won't take care of. All right. Does anyone here know what it is? No. Mm. Why don't you guys just pretend and be like, totally. I'm not going to mm. say. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not going to say. Oh, yeah. like... I've got that poster. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that movie on Laserdisc. Yeah. You That's should use the, on my ass. use the hashtag screenplay, not <laughs> at screenplay, right? No, right. wait, no, no, there's no Twitter account. Yeah, it's so just hashtag. hashtag screenplay. There you go. Sorry. No, I, I want to make that. sure you get like your responses. <laughs> All right. Okay, so up next, let's talk about there's a new trailer out for uh, it's um, for Alejandro Gonzalez Iratu's newest movie called Birdman. Kudos on saying his name right. Thank you. Well, I mean, I'm kind of brown, so if I say it wrong, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucked. Sir, would you mark your race? You is there a box of kind of brown? Brown. Whatever, like, whatever I mark, whatever I mark it, my points go down. <laughs> no, like that, there was like no, you have to like, like mark it. Like Pacific Islander, yeah. white, kind white of just kind of All right. Up next is the movie from Alejandro. Because <laughs> he's like white, sort of Hispanic. Is that what it was? <laughs> Depends on the day of the week. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he's got a new movie called Birdman, yeah, and it's it could be, oh, like cross my fingers, the return of Michael Keaton, maybe. Yeah. Which would be fucking did awesome. Did he ever go away? He did. He did. <laughs> yeah, he did. He definitely no, he did. did. He he's, he needs like a John Travolta and Pulp Fiction kind of moment, which is funny because he was in Jackie Brown. Uh, he was, which is great. He actually played the same character in Jackie Brown that he played in Out of Sight because they're based on characters from the same novel. So okay. that, I thought that was interesting that they actually used the same character and the same actor, which you very rarely ever see. But this movie looks really awesome. Um, it's got a great cast. You've got Michael Keaton leading the thing. You've got Edward Norton. Right. Um, let's see here. You got Zach Galifianakis, Emma Stone, Emma Stone um, and then a few others that I, I'm, I'm just failing to Those remember. Are the main ones, yeah. Well, I mean, essentially from the trailer, it's a story of a guy who was an action hero, right? Mm -hmm. He played Birdman. And Which is like Batman. <laughs> basically fell from grace. Yeah. And no one knows who he is. And now he's trying to, re, you know, bring back his career by doing some sort of Birdman he's, sequel. I, know, I think he's no, doing, he's he's doing, doing a, a stage musical? production. He's doing a stage Which, play. which is funny because he played Batman. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know. And, you know it's, like, it's, totally, it's totally meta. And they're totally, like, doing it with a wink. Like, you know, we know, what, we know that you get all the references. Yeah. But So I'm very interested because this director, this kind of looks like a little bit of a farce. Kind of was... Kind of reminds me a little bit of a Coen Brothers kind of thing, mm -hmm. but it's this guy's only he's done uh, I think what Twenty One Grams mm -hmm. he did Babel mm -hmm. I think Amodos Peros beautiful uh, beautiful uh, so he's kind of known for doing kind of more of those straight up kind of uh, yeah, non linear but really well done movies yeah Babel was really uh, really amazing how it was one of those non linear movies that you didn't really realize yeah. it was non linear until you got to the, about the last quarter of the film and you're like everything starts tying together mm -hmm. in different times and you're like oh that character is that character and that person's that person. If you haven't seen the trailer for Birdman, I really suggest you go check it out. It's a lot of fun. They do. They have like a new version of uh, Niles Barkley's Crazy that's all mm -hmm. slowed down. That sounds awesome. It's, like, it's really really cool. And also, I heard. <laughs> Actually, that kind of <laughs> excuse me. Sorry, I was interested. Song of the summer. <laughs> I'll go back to sleep. <laughs> well, I heard that they're trying to do some magic, uh, some camera trickery, and trying to make it seem as if the whole thing is one shot. Yeah, it wasn't shot one shot, but they're trying to make it look like one continuous thing yeah oh, it, it's a spanish cool. thing you got Inratu did it is uh alfonso Cuarón yeah, did it like gravity. everyone's trying to outdo each other with how long can this shot be which children of men is great because that's a Quran movie but yeah. he, man those one shots are amazing yeah but uh so it's you know let's talk about a little bit more about michael keaton because uh he's did what he was like in white noise too he did a bunch of awful movies he did that jack frost movie that was awful yeah he had about, uh, he had about 15... multiplicity right well multiplicity. i mean okay well you know we're not he had gonna... some great movies <laughs> I, I don't want to say i don't want to say these movies, movies are awful they're just not his best they're no because he came on, on the scene and he was like own. he was doing things like uh batman obviously beetlejuice and even comedies like dream team and he was like he was on a high at that point. Yeah. And then, I don't know, he made some choices in doing some kind of lower key, I think, comedies that mm -hmm. just weren't like out of this world compared to some of the other characters did. And then he just kind of faded into a little bit of obscurity. Well, what I loved, he had a small comedic uh, guest spot on 30 Rock. And then he also did, right. uh, he was in The Other Guys as the, I think, the commissioner or the captain. He was also the voice of Ken in Toy Story That's 3. That's right. He was great. What? Yeah, I didn't realize he's a Ken that. Doll. I was like, oh, yeah. that's amazing. I didn't think, like, yeah. so many voices in Toy Story, you can tell who they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like Ken, I was like, that's Michael Keaton. <laughs> no, he's great. And the other guys, he's always making, like, TLC lyric references. He's, like, always talking, like, Will Ferrell. And, right. Uh, and he's like, yeah, man, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's so good. Did you guys see? Um, I don't. Did any of you see Guardians at the Alamo? Yes, I did mm-hmm. not. So there was a trailer. It, I don't know if you're familiar with the film or not, but this is what made me think of it. Was this whole Michael Keaton possibly sort of being kind of like an, uh, an allusion to his real life, having played Batman and all that? There's this Robin Wright movie that's coming out. Did you see the trailer for it? Where called. it's like I don't know what it's called. It's like Joey. It, I'm on uh, it. Joey, please. I'm on it. It's something with. It's like she plays Robin Wright in the film, Weird. and they're like, oh, oh. "You were the Princess Bride. Yeah, I know what you're you were the about. chosen oh. one." She sells and they want to take herself, her, yeah, her, her personality, personality yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. That's weird. It's, it looks really cool, and it becomes like sort of animated. She's amazing She's in House great. of Cards. I love her so much. So it looks that's it interesting. Looked very Though cool. they did some similar in uh, Hamlet too. Was that that movie with uh, uh, with Amy Poehler and all them? No, Coogan. Uh, no, yeah, it was Steve Coogan was in it, but Elizabeth Shue plays Elizabeth Shue. Right. Well, that so, happens sometimes, like you know, like Bill Murray played Bill Murray in Zombieland. That yeah, that, that was funny. Or Julia Roberts played yeah. Julia Roberts in Oceans. Well, no, she played faking that, herself that was, as Julia Roberts. Bruce uh, Willis played himself. Yeah. Oh, but didn't she also like? Which is weird. That whole she idea. Called yeah. 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 She called herself. She called herself. Yeah. You know what's funny about the Bill Murray and Zombieland thing is I saw Zombieland. I got so sad when that happened. I think we all cried a little bit. Do you have any regrets? Garfield, <laughs> which is funny because on a side note, I heard the only reason he did Garfield is because he saw the Ethan Cohen had written it and he thought it was Ethan Cohen. So he was like, oh, I'll do it. It's a Cohen oh. brother. It's the wrong Cohen. Oh. But I was at a screening of Zombie Land with the, with the filmmakers and the cast. I think it was Austin Film Festival or South By. Or no, it was Fantastic Fest. And uh, they said that that was super last minute. They, they had a few people they were trying to get to be like the special celebrity cameo. and For they, and For Bill Murray scene. Oh, for Zombie Land. But it kept, fall, it kept falling through, kept falling through. And oh. at the very end, Woody Harrelson was like, I'm gonna call Bill Murray. That was <laughs> genius. That, it was a good job, part. Woody. Why not? Uh, you know, he just signed up to do uh, the Jungle Book. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna be bu- oh, wait Blue or yeah, Blue he'll be Blue. Blue. It's That's called yeah. the Congress, guys. The Congress. The Congress is Robin Wright. Yes. Oh, nice. I'll Looks very cool. That's awesome. That's what it's called. Yes. Yeah. The, called the last that. thing I'm gonna say about Michael Keaton and our little Michael Keaton love fest before we move on is a little side note. It was really cool. Is that when Tim Burton was still attached to do Superman? in the 90s, and it was going to be Nicolas Cage as Superman, yeah. Sandra Bullock as Lois Lane, I think Patrick Stewart was Lex There's Luthor. a movie coming out that's the There's documentary, a documentary. Yeah. how that movie died. It's called Super, The Death of Superman. Like death of Superman. Check it out. There's a trailer Lips, called The Death of Superman, it's and it's all about, like, because Kevin Smith wrote the, the script, and it was all it was all this craziness, but there's actually test footage of Nicolas Cage in the outfit. Yeah. And it was yeah. gonna be super dark. There's a photo out there. Yeah. Well, then they actually have footage now from the doc of him actually moving around, which is so surreal. But the coolest thing about it, okay, is by this time, Batman had already been taken on by Joel Schumacher, and he was doing his Val Kilmer, George Clooney Batmans. So uh, Tim Burton was gonna do his Superman, but they were gonna write in a cameo from Batman in the Superman movie, and Michael Keaton was gonna play Batman in that. How were they gonna pull that off if if Schumacher was doing his? I don't know. It, it, was, didn't it didn't happen. I don't have a contract in front of me. I don't have it in front of me, but I thought that would, I thought that would Let's visit awesome. that alternate universe. Well, I heard, like, I haven't seen Neighbors with Seth Rogen, and... Uh, I did. It was a disappointment. I heard it was okay, but I heard there's a whole conversation where they talk about, like, who do you consider... Like, when, you, when I say Batman, yeah. who do you think? He's like, Michael Keaton. He's like, Christian Bale. Christian Bale, yeah. So it's weird. It's a generational thing. Indeed. In- indeed. All right, so moving on. A theater, I think it was in uh, New Jersey, and uh, a few other places... They were supposed to play Guardians of the Galaxy, but they actually played Rise of the Guardians. They did. Mm-hmm. And happens. So they had the wrong movie queued up on the server, and they just saw Guardians. They thought it was going to work out. Here's the worst part. Uh, they did it three times. Right. They, uh, <laughs> this has got to work. This, this has got to work. So they were like, sorry, we're going we're gonna to restart it. We're going to do it again. They show 15 minutes of trailers and commercials again. Then it's Rise of the Guardians again. Oh, sorry, sorry. And then again. So at that point, you know, people are throwing fits, trying to walk out. So let me ask you guys, what are some of your worst movie experiences? I have a, I have a good one. Like um, technical I'll, or just crowd? no uh, uh, movie audience experience, um, which I'm like when I go to see movies, I'm like the grumpy old man <laughs> who wants people to shut up, and I will walk over to people and say, you know, please be quiet, or you know, stuff a sock in your kid, or something like that. <laughs> like I brought I'm some, I brought your some kid. socks. <laughs> okay, so I went and saw. I went and saw. Actually, um, so this is. Uh, do not judge. Do not judge. I went and saw oh, the midnight showing of Twilight. All right, the first I did. one. Fair enough. I believe this was during the first one. This I've also saw the midnight showing of the second one. All right, <laughs> um, you're a brave man. Yeah, and uh, and so I'm I'm actually I, I went all the way up to driving up to the mountains in California, like to to go see it with my family up there. In a hidden place, you had to hide to go watch Very, this movie. Like, it was, <laughs> like sunglasses. It was nice compared to like going to some place in like California, like you know, like in, in the Valley of California, where like a million tweens were like lining up for it. Like it was actually like a small theater, so it was mm-hmm. actually nice, but. I'm in the movie theater. This is the midnight showing. So like half, you know, the movie starts at midnight, so it's going to end at two. So this is like, you wouldn't think you'd bring, say, your three-year-old child to the showing. We sat in the back. 
back row behind us, someone brought their little kid. And obviously, like, throughout the whole movie, the kid was just not entertained, was not having fun, was up at midnight and past, and just kept getting more and more pissed off. And by the end of the movie, like, you know, by the end of the movie, there's, like, the climax, and you really want to hear what's going on and see what's happening, like, I think, just in any movie. Yeah. That's when the kid just starts making laps back and forth. <laughs> just, just doing, and and then training. starts crying they want to leave. While, like, I'm trying to hear, you know, the stupid dialogue that, that is in this stupid movie. And I literally, I turned around and told this, um, I would assume, some sort of uh, mountain hillbilly to, like, please just take your kid out. And they started getting mad at me and that kind of thing. But it was, it was, that's my, that's my horror movie experience whenever anybody just starts I talking. Love, I love how you're whining about a bad screen of Twilight. Right. It ruined <laughs> hey, my Twilight hey. screening. John, I want you to know that we can hold hands because I saw the first, second, and last Twilight at midnight. Bring it. What do you what? 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 Bring what? it. What? I did. I'm sorry. Whenever, one of them was what? for work. The first two were for pleasure. I saw one with, I saw one with uh, Mr. Sinus where they make fun of the movie. Okay. Uh, or no, Master Pancake. Mr. Better. Master Pancake. Cool. No, no, no. It was <laughs> funny. But dude, whenever that dude imprints that baby, I was like, get, I'm out. I'm done. Uh -huh. yeah. That was well, weird. Some of us read we're the not going to talk about coming. the freaky. We're not going to talk uh, about the books. But let me say really quickly. I read all of them. Thank you. John, when you were talking about the climax of the movie, I just want to say that was my failed attempt for naming the show. I wanted to call it the climax. But apparently, we couldn't get sponsorship if we have a Show called the climax. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we talking worst? Yeah, bo bad movie experiences. Movie theaters, because we had a most embarrassing. Is this separate? Or is this the this same is thing? Separate. This yeah, is separate. Yeah, separate. This is separate. Okay. Well, I don't want to use my most embarrassing story. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of like a bad, super bad theater experience, except for um, I saw the movie Side Effects for work. Um, it has Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah, it's a Steven Soderbergh movie. It's a great movie, by the way. Really, really good. But there are some lady-on-lady -lady scenes in it. And there was, like, I was seeing it for work, so it was Friday morning at, like, maybe 9 a.m. So there's only, like, a few other people in the theater. <laughs> and it's an old dude. And every time there's, like, a lady kiss or something, he'd be like, ugh. Like, so <laughs> loud. Wait, like, wait, like, like, he was enjoying it? Oh, yeah. Like, oh. Oh. That noise does not sound like enjoyment. It sounds like It was a gas. weird guttural <laughs> groan. But it was so loud. He's like, like, like there just other, you two in the theater? No, it was, like, it was, like, me and the person. <laughs> Sitting with next him her. and like three, like there are other, and he could see them. It's not like they were behind him and he didn't know. <laughs> sir, keep your moments. You're like, to sir, yourself. let me see both your hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all agree, oh. but geez. that reminds me. Whenever um, Fifty Shades of Grey comes out, I think in February. Oh yeah, whoever should have to watch it with no, their hands. Whoever, like whoever's that. on the show that week, I'm gonna make them watch that movie with me. Like we're gonna have like a whole outing where we I all go watch it together. You should also make them read the fanfic that it comes from. No, I thank will you. Distribute copies from the PDF on my laptop. I've read you enough. I've, been, I've read enough weird things on Tumblr. It's I don't real. Need to read 50 it's Shades real. of Grey. It's a Twilight fan fiction. It's a Twilight I don't fan know fic. how it's legal which, that which you Which is made weird because going, going on the topic, that, uh, that movie Mortal Instruments based on that book series yeah. is a fanfic based on Harry Potter. I didn't know that. Huh. And yeah. I read both the first Mortal Instruments and the first whatever the companion series yeah, is. They both suck. The idea is it's Jenny Weasley and Draco running off, oh, but, but they changed the characters. So now you know. The more you know. See, here's the thing. I thought Master of the Universe was better than Fifty Shades of Grey because it had the characterization of those characters. Wait, Master of the Universe like He-Man? Master of the Universe is the name of the fanfic of Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, originally. I was thinking oh. He-Man. Yeah. I immediately started thinking Skeletor. Is there yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Bondage and Skeletor <laughs> and He-Man. Why not? <laughs> Chris, any bad movie experiences? This isn't really... I mean, I've had bad movies where the crying baby and... Well, not your you own know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the worst is uh, I went and saw uh, Doom... Uh, no, no. Um, what, rot the Rock Doom? Yeah. Spoiler, uh, he's a villain. And uh, I went with my friend, and he, he was like, well, I, I got to get drunk before we go see this. And then, he, and then like halfway through the movie, he's like, I got to go. And so he gets up, and he goes to the bathroom. And then he comes back, and he's like, I'm better now. I get up, and I go to the bathroom. Later, he would vomited everywhere. Oh. I don't know. I, I think it was like just vomit across and I thought oh really, so then I go and I'm like I almost vomit because I'm like going into this yeah. bathroom he just I, I guess he's just I don't know why he went to the bathroom to vomit all over the floor of the bathroom well because that's <laughs> he's that's, considerate that's, that's, that's a considerate. certain level of courtesy yeah. yeah I guess that's funny so I was like well this kind of killed my movie vibe you moved the damn table too close dude I can't like <laughs> he's getting claustrophobic <laughs> John, John is in like <laughs> incredibly short hands and he pulled the table like right up to us. John Aww. needs an adult. <laughs> I saw, I saw Ali. I, it wasn't that awful experience. I was watching that Ali movie with, with Will Smith and uh, in one of the fight sequences that just lasted for forever, uh, the projector stopped for like 30 minutes. And then, you know, when it, by the time it, they brought it back on, I was like, I don't even want to see this movie anymore. See, I had the same thing with Les Mis. We had a fire alarm pulled in the middle of Les Mis, but it was great because that movie's like six hours long. So I was like, oh, yeah. I have to stretch my legs. Intermission. Yeah, nice. I'm ready to come back. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we only got a couple. Uh, I think Joey's going to ring the bell here a second on movies, but we're going to push a little bit further through it. Go ahead and ring the bell, Joey. I know we're always at time. 
There you go. All right, hey. you're 30 seconds away, sir. I was ready. Away. I was ready. Wow. My inner wow. my inner clock is working. <laughs> it's working. It's, it's functioning. Working. But, but before we do, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, they announced that so they've been talking about doing a Ghostbusters three for forever. Yes. Um, and so actually, I think it was Eaton Cohen. Uh, who I was talking about earlier in the film wrote a draft, and then some of the guys from the office wrote a draft that uh, not Harold Ramis, but Ivan Reitman was feeling pretty good about, and they were mm-hmm. going to push forward. But Paul Feig, who mm-hmm. directed, uh, he has a small part in Heavyweights, which is an awesome movie. You should check oh, out. Oh, that's a great Ben Stiller movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he plays uh, the guy that got skinny at the count. He's the counselor that got skinny. Oh, I forgot uh, that was a Ben Stiller great movie. movie. No, he's great. That's, that's such a super good. He plays a body psycho. Yeah. Body system. Oh, <laughs> body. Good one. A good and, psycho. We're getting, we're getting off topic, but yeah. Okay. So Paul Feig, he also went off. He went and directed. He's he's gotten really popular. Uh, he's did uh, bridesmaids. He did bridesmaids. He's on a lot of Melissa McCarthy movies. Anyway, so always he, wears a suit. That's right. He pitched an idea for a Ghostbusters 3, and it, they're pushing forward with it for the time being. So, oh, guy, you guys want to sit down if you're at home watching this? Because <laughs> they're standing up, apparently. <laughs> but that's how I, I watch all of my <laughs> content. They're trying to do an all-female Ghostbusters 3. Reboot. Is it's, it going to be a reboot or a sequel? They, yeah. they don't know yet. No. I've, I've heard mixed things. Oh, yeah, things. it's all speculation at this point. Yeah. Can I just say that the first comment on Ain't It Cool News on this story said, uh, there's something strange, and it don't look good. <laughs> 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 I actually heard the song Ghostbusters this morning in the car. R- Ray very... something Jr. Ray Parker Jr. Beanie, so. beanie, beanie, it's, yeah, it's got a good beanie, hook. Beanie, beanie. Well, yeah. I don't know how I feel about this because I love Ghostbusters. I was listening to this. Uh, I was listening to this podcast recently with Michael Sarah talk about how he become an actor because he loved Ghostbusters so much that at some point they were talking about maybe bringing him on for Ghostbusters three, and he had he's like, I can't. I don't want to touch it because I love that movie yeah. so much. Both of them. People shit on part two, and maybe it was because I was a kid, but I love part I two. Like part yeah, two. I liked them. <laughs> I liked them both because yeah. maybe because I was great. young. Yeah, it's kind of sad now because Harold Ramis, R.I.P., is now left. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and Bill Murray doesn't want to do it. Bill Murray doesn't want to yeah. do it. I read that Bill Murray at one point said he was interested. In doing the movie, but only if he died in the first 15 minutes. Yeah, he joked about that on late night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but well, he'd come back as a ghost or something. That'd be funny. (laughs) No, he wouldn't come back. (laughs) He'd be like, I don't come back. I read his article. He did some voiceover work for the Ghostbusters video game. Oh, when they, when they, yeah, he did see. So he did voices. He did Venkman, which is everyone's favorite. Who did the voices for the cartoon? I don't know, but the guy who did Venkman's voice in the cartoon was also great. But uh, but Bill Murray did some voices for the video game recently, and I remember reading this article where he was walking down New York, uh, just some sidewalk, and he was he just got done recording the lines, and he was whistling the theme song. Oh no! And then somebody like was like, like some just random stranger passing by and goes, "Bill, get over it. It was twenty years ago." <laughs> That's funny. But so wait, okay. So some people I talk to are like, "Totally, I'll give it a chance. I could love it." You know, maybe a Ghostbusters with some Melissa McCarthy, uh, Emma Stone. Uh, Aub- Aub- Aubrey Plaza or something, you know, would you be into that? Would you Reboots be into female Reboots can be good. Yeah. Reboots yeah. can I, have good, you know, like Batman Begins. Great reboot. Yeah, great. I don't care for a, a, a Ghostbusters. I don't, I don't want one. Like, there, it was good. Leave it. Like, you had this. It's been so long. Like, you don't need to bring this back. Like, it's like, go work on something else yeah. original. Yeah, just take those same that same cast and make something original. Yeah. Like, what? What, the, Hollywood original? What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's sort of. I would watch it if yeah. it came yeah. out. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna not go see the new Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters yeah. But I don't know. I'm not like. I'll tell you what, Hollywood. You're it's wrong yeah. in this country. You bring back. <laughs> you bring, I, will, I will go watch. You're the reason Transformers is number one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'll but tell you I'm what. Not gonna, I'm not like freaking out to go see. It. Like, oh, I you bring. See you is that how you freak out, Chris? This is freak out. The anime gift. You bring back Rick Moranis, and I will be there oh. on opening day. I swear to you, because that you is gone, a guy. Rick he, Moranis. Michael Keaton deserves a comeback, but so does Rick Moranis. And I know why he left. He everyone. Want to. He left Hollywood because his, like, I believe his wife. His wife died. His, yeah. his wife passed away, so he had to raise his kids. And, and now he, he just had makes no country albums. to come back. But God, man, have you? I just watched Little Shop of Horrors last week. That guy's awesome. I know. Yeah. So he's, good. He's content. I love me some Rick Moranis. All right, I, so I, you have to give props to people who end their career on a high note and do not touch it again. Kind of like Bill Watterson with Calvin Hobbes. Like, mm-hmm, true. do what you want to do with it and don't run it to the ground like not, Garfield. Like, British, uh, British sitcom is really good about that. Like, letting it go on top, you know, yeah. versus like, IT look, crowd. look at yeah. the American office where they kind of went maybe a season too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of a little, a little too crazy. Anyway, we're about to get to television. But, before we, but before we do get into the world of TV, uh, Joey, you want to tell us what this quote is and who was the person who let us know what it was? All right, so the quote again was, put some ice on it. After that, there's nothing a few beers won't take care of. And it is from... Nope. Dazed and Confused. Nice. Ah, ben Affleck. I feel good. Ah, I, I, that, I feel good when I don't get it if I've never seen, never seen it. The, that, movie's, that movie made so nice. many people and, famous. And uh, Mona P., who's at Monza Bird, got it right on Twitter. So thank you for answering correctly and knowing Shout out shit. to you, Mona. Huzzah. Mona. 
You know, it's funny as I was reading this book last night. I can go to sleep. So I was reading this book about Hollywood and stuff, and they're talking about Four Rooms, that movie that was like it was Tarantino had a movie in it, Rodriguez had a movie in it, and the two directors that I'm forgetting. It was a, it was an ensemble. They, two other I, two other people that whatever. <laughs> but they were talking about how like they all started off doing it like, hey, we're all friends and filmmakers, and then towards the end they all hated each other because like they were like kind of battling for more screen time. And a lot of people don't know this, but Linklater was supposed to have uh, a, a, a his own short in that movie, and at the end he decided to not. So that's a little bit of trivia for you. Uh, sorry. Yay. <laughs> Yay, trivia. Yay, trivia. Anyway, TV. so. All right. <laughs> Sharknado 2. It's a I big hit. Supportive. Why is Sharknado 2 so the big? I Sharknado. Because of Will Wheaton. Be, you don't need to, like, see it to know that this thing is taken. It's, it also made the biggest online imprint, which I'm not really sure what that means. It means that they got the most, like, uh, hashtag, like, traffic. More it, than like Game of Thrones. It beat Game of Thrones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of like, it's. I, 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 I think this is this whole snakes on a plane thing going on. Well, it's, yeah, it's kind of like the potato salad it's, Kickstarter. It's, you know, yeah. it's like, this is a thing that the, the internet's going to get. Oh, yeah. There's, there was a guy who wanted $10 for to make potato salad on Kickstarter and he got like a million dollars. No. Yes. Shut up. Yeah. For real? Okay, it wasn't a million dollars. It, it, it was like <laughs> a, a lot of. I'm going to look at it. Was like $900,000? No, it was, it was like, like last time I checked, it was like $300,000. No. no. But it's Let me double check. Google. I'm going to double check. I don't even like well, potato salad. It's on it. Uh, you could get a bite of the potato <laughs> salad. No joke. That was one of the But it's one of those things. It's like the internet gets behind it and they're like. It, clo know, is, we, it closed we, with $55,000. Oh, I thought it got like $900,000. <laughs> I mean, it's still I impressive. Feel cheated. That's very I'm still impressive. And you're a liar. <laughs> and you're a liar. No, glad we're all supportive here. Don't believe <laughs> anything she says here. on Can't the no. It's week. all just bullshit. Call someone who's in our news segment. <laughs> a you're total a liar. liar. <laughs> it's going to be awkward when we sit but next to each other. Barbara Walters, you're full of shit. So, talking about Sharknado 2, so here's this thing. It's kind of like these Roger Corman. Esque movies, Disaster these kind of B movies. totally silly movies. Like I think there's like Mega Octopus or something. What's the tagline? Of it? Shark happens. Shark happens. <laughs> but this Sharknado Two has so many cameos. It has Will Wheaton. Has Conan O'Brien. Has it has it has a lot of people. Judd Hirsch. It's, so many people are in this movie. It's a, it's a sci-fi film. It's doing so well. They're gonna put it in theaters for a one-night yeah. event. They did that for the so, first one. Well, did they? Yeah, no, they made like a hundred, couple hundred thousand dollars. Really. Yeah. Piranha 3D was this, oh god, I keep hitting my mic, sorry. Uh, Piranha 3D was the same way where it had a bunch of cameos and it was like, why do we give a shit about was this it, movie? Wasn't Tara Reid in that one too? I don't know. I, I, don't, I know Paul Shear had a cameo. Piranha 3D, I actually kind of enjoyed. I actually enjoyed the sequel. You need to just get I mean, off the it, stage. It's one of those things where, it you, in it? it's a movie, yeah. you know what you're getting when you go into it. You know, okay, it's, yeah. it's Sharknado or Piranha 3D. Right. It's like, so you're gonna see? Are you think you're gonna see a big rise in these farce kind of sci-fi silly joke you movies? You know, it was kind of like when everybody and their mother was making, you know, not another blah movie. You know, yeah. right? It was well, like um, yeah. 15 of those were out each year. You know, it'll be a fad for a little bit, and then it'll be oversaturated, and it won't be a joke anymore. Yeah, it's like an overused joke, and then it'll stop, and then a new joke will happen. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, well, let's move on. Nice. Let's talk yes. about let's talk about Big Bang Theory, guys. Okay. Yeah. All right, the Big Bang Theory guys are getting a million dollars an episode. Yeah. Three of them. Are. Three of them. Wait, yeah, three wait. of them. And then two are still. Uh, Galecki, Parsons, and Cuoco. Yeah, okay. they're they're the first, the top three build, and they negotiated as favored nations, so they each get the same contract deal. Okay. And then there are two more, the two other guys. <laughs> I don't the know their names. Other I'm guys. sorry. <laughs> I, I actually don't know their names either. My mom watches it, but I don't. Um, so it's the two other guys. One's yeah. got a Jewish. Um, Name one's got a foreign name. Whoa! <laughs> wow. I didn't say it. You just ended um, up on a list. <laughs> they are still negotiating, but they're supposed to be done this week. But my mom was telling me that before this deal, they made three hundred and fifty thousand dollars an episode. The top three. Yeah. yeah. And the other two guys made like fifty grand. They made hundred thousand. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. She was saying it was like a really big. It's still, I mean, that's, and, still, that's something to shake a stick at. But well, your friend, well, yeah. I would like, say those top three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the, the that. top. The three that got that got their million dollar deal. They're actually ones who have like been able to explore and have. Of careers outside of Big Bang, of like course. they've shown up in feature films. Well, Parson and, and Parson keeps winning that Emmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parsons is, also does and, uh, Broadway and that kind of thing. Yeah, and he threatened to leave. Like oh, he was really? rumored that he didn't want to do it anymore. But wow. the show got renewed for three more seasons, so they were like, "Please." Galecki will always be David from Ozan to me. I don't care what else he's in. Do you remember that when he was mm -hmm. younger? He was uh, like Darlene's boyfriend. I'm in showing what? my age. Oh yeah, on Ro oh, yeah. On Roseanne. Yeah, oh, Roseanne. Totally. Oh, in Roseanne. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, totally cool. <laughs> totally cool. No, they're, they're, Super uh, they're now making basically as much as uh, the Friends cast was making. Yeah, it's the true. Well, but the Friends cast was all favorite nations, so all six of them. Right. Are they all six stay or seven. still alone. I'm um, still together. 
Yeah, they all got the same thing, but now it's three versus the other. And I think Maya Bialik also makes a, a smaller page. Like are, a super are you, small you talking page. about Blossom? Yeah, she's on the show. Yeah, I know. That's, <laughs> so yeah, she's, she'll always be Blossom. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. Um, she's smart. Yeah. She's well, awesome. Here's the thing. Let's talk about what year is it? It's 2014, and uh, single camera or multiple multiple camera like set like sitcoms are still a thing, and also right. a big thing. You've had 30 Rock like. Uh, what was it? I think Beale was the first one to kind of start that single camera thing and made it okay. And then everyone's doing TV shows that look like movies, but yet old style sitcoms that are similar to like I Love Lucy and things from the fifties are right still now is a big hit. What else multi cam uh, sitcom? How, uh, the Ashton I Met Kutcher Your Mother one. was it? Oh, everything Kutcher on CBS. Oh, two and a half men. Everything on CBS, pretty much. Yeah, Two and a Half Men was the leading show for a long time, and it was it was like that thing like Burn Notice, where people would be like, "I'm like, who's watching these shows?" Well, that's what gets me about Big Bang Theory is because anytime people mother. are like talk about Big Bang Theory, everyone's like, "Oh, we're show over." Twenty million people plus watch it a week, yeah. so it's like it's obviously it's yeah. speaking to somebody. I don't watch it, but I a lot it. of people somebody watches it. My I mom is it. obsessed with that damn show. I watch Twilight and I watch Big Bang Theory. <laughs> right, I, I can't get you. I can't. Hi, my name's John, Theory, my name's John and I Twilight. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, I mean, obviously somebody's watching it, so. It's true. I mean, there's definitely an audience there. Okay, so Nickelodeon is going to make a TV series, a TV show version of Richard Linklater's School of Rock. Yep. Producers uh, Scott Rudin from the movie and Richard Linklater are both producing the yep. show. So that that's not the first time a movie, no. a show's been based on a mm-hmm. movie, but some have fared better than others. Right. I want to go on record and say, I first of all, I hate M.A.S.H., like, I mean, I never got into MASH. Wow. The movie, the TV show. Oh, no, the, get no, off the, the stage. The TV show. I mean, come on. Like, it was, you know, with you, here's the thing about MASH. <laughs> you know what's crazy about the I'm MASH so theme song? I'm so old. I love that damn that show. Kid, uh, Robert Altman's teenage yeah. son wrote that. Yeah. He ended up making more money off the song than his dad made for the movie. That's awesome. Huh. Yeah. So, but the, yeah, the, the lyrics to the Mash theme song are depressing. Yeah, suicide is painless. Are depressing. I mean, yeah. it's I mean, called suicide is painless. Would yeah. anybody like to guess if Feel it's depressing good. or not? But that show lasted for forever. Yeah. So that was a really good example good of a TV show, show that based on the movie that did well. There's some others that have not done as well. Clueless had a TV show. Yeah, that kind of, it did. It, it did. did. Clerks had a show. Uh, it was an animated show, but yeah, it did. Yeah. Mighty um, Ducks animated series. Was that? <laughs> Mighty, Ducks. Mighty Ducks animated series. Was, was it even about hockey? Or was it about actual ducks? It was about alien uh, ducks that came down and. Uh, <laughs> okay, but was Emilio well, Estevez in it? No. <laughs> Emilio! Look at that. Yeah, Clueless, the Mighty TV ducks show was movie. terrible, and I remember why I wanted it to be so good. <laughs> I got that reference. <laughs> you got your own reference? Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. there's, I mean, there's shows that are better than the movies, too. too like, like, example. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Right. Ah. Okay. Both done by Joss Whedon, actually, too. Mm-hmm. The movie's also he, good. People shit on that movie. Yeah, good a, movie. She uses the flag as a statement. David Arquette's in it. it. Paul, Ru- Paul Rubens is in it. Pee Wee's in that movie. I'm, I'm just, I'm, the, I mean, the movie's, I'm not saying the movie's Rucker horrible. Howard. Oh, I know. I think I the show can, is better. I can't though. argue the show was, is I would say, arguably <laughs> more <laughs> successful than the, the movie. Oh, yeah. ab- easily. Hands down. Hannibal. Nice. That's Hannibal, my Hannibal, uh, Bates Motel, kind of based off that Bates Motel is good. Uh, Joey, uh, what other? Are we missing anything? Vera from Gara is based on awesome. movies. Yeah, TV shows based on movies. Stargate? Catfish. Oh, yeah. Catfish is kind of similar. Oh, yeah. 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 Catfish was a documentary, and then MTV made a. I heard that that show well, like, is just so fake now. Like, it's not very realistic. 30 Days with. Um, That's uh, right. The Super Size Me uh, was another. Yeah, oh it's my based gosh. On, it was based essentially on his, a spin-off it was Super Size of, Me. Of, of, what yeah. was that yeah. guy's name, Joey? Uh, Morgan Spurlock. Thank Morgan you. Spurlock. Yeah. He's good. He's great. Morgan Spurlock. Like Very sweet. He did man. the Comic Con movie as Greatest well. Greatest movie ever yes, sold. Yes, he did. Yeah, but and then he also did the One Direction movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? I didn't he, know that's that. A, he did that documentary. He's like, you know what? Let's just make some money. <laughs> Friday Night Lights. Friday oh Lights. my that's god! Right. Oh. And that show Lasted way for better than the movie. Yeah. So good. That's I'll punch funny. someby. I think my wife has that watched that show, show three times. Show is so through. good. You know, it's weird. Is I never oh. could get into that show because I lived that show because I come yeah. from a small Texas town. That's why I love it so much. And it was still here. I know. I've been on set and stuff. I've been to the. I'm saying saying that like. I know that life of like small Texas town obsessed with football. Being the so quarterback. The, yeah, so the idea was like I wasn't quarterback. <laughs> I was I was a wide receiver for a while though. Oh, look at you. Yeah, I scored a touchdown. No uh, big someone deal. from our studio <laughs> audience <laughs> says uh, Star Wars was also made. Yeah, into, the uh, Star Wars. Blade over here. <laughs> Star Wars. Hi. <laughs> no, Friday Night Lights. That's I think that's why I loved it so much because I was like, oh, it's like being in high school again. How exciting. it really is. It really. Except for Texas the, football show. That's right. That was one of what the shows the that got guy? brought. 
Uh, Taylor Kitsch. <laughs> Taylor Kitsch, boom! Uh, was, Thank uh, you. Gambit. Well, he's Gambit, but in, and was John, let's not talk John, about and that. He was also that's John a, Carter. He was John yeah, Carter. John we'll Carter. talk about that. Yeah, that guy, like, he's really talented and he does well, but like his, it's like almost like he's box office poison. He is. Well, he did the same same year. He had John, uh, Carter, was John Carter, Mars, and uh, Battleship. Yeah, which both yeah. were like the two biggest bombs of that uh, year. Of that year. So, and then he did the Savages, which is an Oliver Stone movie, and now I think he's gonna try to be in the Raid American version. Yeah, mm. which but we need. Yeah, do we though? No, I'm shaking my head right now. I just wish people would watch originals so much more. They're like they're good for a reason, you know. Like God, God forbid you have to read some subtitles. I don't. I, I understand we have to like redo a movie. We're talk about movies for a sec, but like, I, I understand redoing a movie if it's done in a different language. But if it's a British movie or show, yeah, I don't see what the big deal. I don't is. understand uh, redoing it. Death at a Funeral it. is the worst worst example. Oh, like the Great remake British film brought over turned into. Not the best Chris Rock. Well, Shameless film. is a show on Showtime, right? I've never, I've seen maybe one or two episodes of the American version. I've seen a lot of the British episodes, and they're great. The British episodes are so good. I think so that's good. an example of both doing okay. Yeah, but it's just this thing where I think I don't see why American audiences can't watch well, it. What about it's, Office? It's, it's, Office? it's in English. Well, that's the thing. With the same like, thing with Office or In Betweeners. Yeah, they're In Betweeners brought that, it right? over here. Well, they brought um, the is show there an American over. Version of in Betweeners. There was for a season, if even that, and it failed horribly, oh, and it yeah. wasn't funny. And I'm sorry to the MTV, person on the cast so that I know. I mean, well, you know, you know, Mick G. <laughs> Who has an awful name? Who? And he, Mick G. He directed, he directed great movies like Charlie's Angels, the both those movies. But he also did that Terminator Salvation that not many people like. Oh, Terminator is another one that was a uh, movie in a TV series. Oh yeah, Sarah the Sarah the Sarah Chronicles. 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 There you go. Sarah Chronicles. Chronicles? Yeah, the but, Chronicles. I said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Mick G. Mick G. Was trying to do an American version of Spaced for a long time. Huh. Oh, uh, yeah. Simon Pegg show. Touch Simon the Ed, Pegg. Yeah, the Edgar Wright show, or yeah, Simon Pegg. Edgar Simon Pegg and Frost, whatever. Yeah. Uh, okay, so speaking of cool shows, Mike Tyson. Segway. Mike Tyson Mysteries. Mike Tyson Mysteries. Have you seen the trailer for this? Do we yeah, have that? I haven't. Mm -hmm. I just saw the it bags It looks so at awesome, ridiculous. It had his face on it. That's Mike Tyson is voicing it. Yeah, he's yeah. Yes. No, he's animating yeah. and he's writing it. <laughs> he's such a lazy voice. But I love it because it looks kind of like what Scooby Doo, and you have Jim Rash. I think that's yeah. his name. So, uh, and he's playing a ghost. And he's he's also the dean on Community, and yeah. he also won an Oscar for writing. He's a writer. Yeah. He wrote that uh, The Descendants. Yep. Uh, and he has a great show called uh, The Writing Room. Yep. But uh, and then so he's on it. But Norm Macdonald is back as a pigeon. As a pigeon. As a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> kind of t taking a page out of the Seth MacFarlane book of giving voices to weird objects. But yeah, he's gonna be a drunk pigeon. Pigeons weird objects. But I'm excited. I'm I like excited. that he kept his facial tattoo, his tooth gap. <laughs> it's on it's his all van. There. It's well, it, all there. He he he's, he gets it. Oh, Mike yeah, Tyson, no, he, he gets it. He's like, the all same right. way Gary Busey gets it. At least I like to think Gary Busey gets it. His, oh. his <laughs> Amazon Fire commercial might be the best thing ever. <laughs> Gary Busey. Gary Busey. <laughs> Hello, lamp. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm excited about that. I think it's a is it cartoon? Is it the Cartoon Network or is it Comedy Central? Yeah, I believe no, no. it's Cartoon Network. I hope it lasts for a. Uh, oh wait, it might be Comedy Central. I don't know. Joey, I'm on it. Well, there was a show called Kid Notorious for a while that That's was my on Comedy Central. Do. It was yeah. it was based on Robert Evans, who was like a movie producer, and uh, Slash was like his friend, and they went oh, around. I remember like, that. Yeah, they went around solving like crimes and stuff. It was all right. It was kind of like if you knew who Robert Evans is, it was funny. It's on Adult Swim. Oh, Adult, Adult, Adult Swim. Cartoon Network. Oh, so Cartoon Network. Really there you go. Great. And apparently, Jamie Foxx is supposed to play him in a new biopic coming up. So. Mike Tyson? Mike yeah. Tyson? Oh, oh wow. yeah, he is. That, I've seen I that in the news. Jamie Fox. Nice. I hope they do the scene where he bites Evander Holyfield's, Evander Holyfield's ear yep. off. Say the word. I got it. I got it. Nailed it. Sarah Chronic Chronicles. Good friend. Check it out. All right. So that brings us to the end of TV. Anyone want to say anything about TV? Anything? Better call like TV. TV's Everybody? fun. Television's great. <laughs> <laughs> there. there you go. We have a synergy. It's a Twilight synergy. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're John, you're sparkling. <laughs> you're sparkling right now. Twilight synergy. That's our team name. Yes. Nice. Let's talk about its movie book club of the week moment where we talk about movie movies. book club <laughs> of the week Can't moment. Be a movie club, <laughs> <And> <laughs> club <laughs> name ever. Movie book club of the week. Uh, parentheses. What's the acronym for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, every episode we're going to spotlight a film, sometimes a new movie in theater, sometimes a movie on DVD, or sometimes an old film that's been out for a few years, and we're all going to take a week, watch it, come back, and talk about it. This we're going to take a week to watch it. <laughs> it's a long yeah, movie. Five like minutes a day. Can I movie. say anything? <laughs> <laughs> we should host this show ourselves. Yay, okay, so, so I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna. Be... All right. Well, this week we're doing Gardens of the Galaxy, which just came out in theaters, which I've been super stoked about for a long time. This movie. Yes. And I think we have a trailer, so let's go ahead and uh, play a little clip from that film.
es un avión. <risa> You got the dick message. And we're back. Yeah. <laughs> How did you guys like Guardians of the Galaxy? Can we talk about our costumes for a second? Are we wearing costumes? Yeah. I just, I just wear this all the time. I just, thank you. I'm going to turn, I'm gonna turn mine. All right. Yeah. I'm Peter oh, yeah. Quill, otherwise known as Star-Lord. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Chris? I'm Groot. <laughs> <laughs> On a budget. <laughs> you smile like Groot, too. <laughs> You looks John. like John. Looks like you. I am obviously Davy Crockett. It's <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful cameo in the film. <laughs> they were like, uh, "Listen, we wanted to get you a costume. We just Crick, got you get the green makeup. We just got you a Nerf gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nerf gun lady. Kara, get some cream stuff. We would have loved to draw on you like Gamora. It just yep. would have taken way too much time. You You've got her hair color <laughs> almost a little bit. Yeah, Zoe Saldana looked great in that film. Yeah, she's she doing, did. She's, she made green paint look good. She's done a lot of stuff. <laughs> what What are the movies that she's in? She's done Star Trek. Uh, okay, that's what it was. She's in Star Trek. She's in Avatar. Now she's, she's in Guardians. She's in a great TV she miniseries. Um, and uh, she's what was the, the sci-fi? Totally killing sci-fi. Totally killing sci-fi. What was the, the Joey? Omen? What was the Devil Baby miniseries she did? Uh, also, what Rosemary's was so, Baby? Huh? Rosemary's, Rosemary's Baby? Rosemary's Baby. Also, what was the other one she did where she's like a somebody kills her father in front of her and then she goes to be a badass oh, Col assassin? Colombiana? Huh? Colombiana? Oh, Colombiana. oh that's right. Yeah. Joey, yeah. could you say Colombiana again? Yeah, dude. Colombiana? Right. <laughs> <laughs> can you say your last name one more time? JJ, say it. Aranda? What? <laughs> <laughs> now I just want text mex <laughs> Wait, is yours loaded? Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> you got this close to my face. We well, are wearing a mask. Maker. <laughs> Talk the rest of the podcast with that mask on. No, no, it's maybe gonna not. distort your audio so badly. <laughs> well, you know, it's really so. It's funny about Zoe Saldana; she's killing it in films where from Avatar. Whereas Sam Worthington, that's right? She was Avatar. Yeah, she's yeah. Still yeah. Sam Avatar. Worthington is not doing so great. Well, I mean, I guess he was in the Class of Titans movies, but she's also cooking a baby. Is she cooking a baby? Cooking a baby. Oh my god, right that's now. illegal. Right now, in her tum tum. In her tum tum. Yeah. Nice. She did a nude shoot, and she was like, "I feel like I look." weird right now because I'm pregnant but she's you can't really see it yet really yeah nice naked whoa Check it out. that's hmm. the definition that's, of a nude and, shoot and that's the, <laughs> the nude scoop with Meg Turney back to you guys <laughs> let's talk about the movie okay. I fucking loved it yes yes I enjoyed that opening sequence like it just totally set the tone out like well first obviously I mean not gonna go we're not gonna go too spoiler crazy but you know it starts off in the hospital whatever and that's all kind of straightforward but that moment he grabs that space rat and start singing the song. It good, just sets it the tone. tone. And then when the the way the, the the title comes in, while all the songs play and everything, you're like, this is gonna be well, a fun Chris movie. Chris Pratt was just the most genius choice they could make for someone Absolutely. being Peter Quill. He's so funny. He's so likable. Yeah. Can we talk about how he hotted up for this part? He really did. He, <laughs> he kicked had a his great, own ass. He had a great part. interview on Movie Phone where they asked him to to reenact how it felt to be asked to be in a Marvel film, and he's like, he's obviously like saying like he got his mind blown out and everything like that. But then he's like. Like telling like, honey, I need to lose 75 pounds real quick. Stop baking. Because <laughs> dude from like Parks and Rec, he had a bit of a belly. Yeah, yeah he but did. He, and he'd, now been he's in sexy. he'd been in shape though before. If you watch a movie called Take Me Home Tonight with Topher Grace. Oh, I love Topher Grace. Yeah, that Look at him. Yeah. I got a like, real look at him. Look at him. That man. Look at it. I <laughs> am Groot. <laughs> Damn it, Chris. Uh, let's just say, can we just say how can adorable baby shoulders? Groot was? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> We're not going to go too crazy spoilers, but I will say, my favorite part of the movie yeah. was when Groot picks up a bunch of dudes and just just decimates them, and then he's like, turns around, he smiles, and and <laughs> <laughs> he a smile. Let's see the smile, Chris. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's Nailed smile. it. That was yeah. my favorite well, moment in the film. We well, so yeah, but I was saying, so Chris uh, Pratt was actually, he's been skinny before. I feel right. like he had to get big to become famous. Huh. Like, you know, because Parks and Rec had to become kind of the schlubby. Zach Galifianakis did the same thing. He was always kind of... Fat guys are funny. Yeah, fat guys are just funnier and easier to market, I guess. But <laughs> but now he's doing great now. So now he's in Guardians. He's going to be in Jurassic World. He yeah. was awesome in the Lego movie. Lego he was. movie. So he's, he's, this is a Chris Pratt year. Yeah. yeah. And I heard, the Dave, Pratt. I heard that Dave Bautista uh, cried whenever he found out he got the role. Yeah. Like he was so like, really me? Yeah, Aww. and he was great. Yeah, he did a fantastic they all job did. being Drax. I, I go ahead. The, I, uh, the way I did, they wrote him. I did a um, at Comic Con. I played Super Fight with. Uh, we did a bunch of different games mm -hmm. with celebrities, and Michael Rooker was in one of our games, and he is the exact same in real life as Every, he is in the movie. He yells everything. He has that weird like that, that draw? like kind of like draw and Michael Rooker. He's played. kind of a creep, but he was nice. Just he was uh, who was the, he was the guy with the uh, he was I, blue and he had the like the one. teeth yeah. I can't remember his name Yondu, say, was, Yondu thank that's you. right I was gonna say Yolandi or something but <laughs> that's, that's, the chick, that's the chick from Die Antwoord yeah <laughs> who's actually in a movie coming out later 
at some point. We'll With talk about. Um, uh, Neil Bloomkamp. Yeah, Boom. yeah. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a weird movie. I, I, I do want to talk about Chappie at some point, but right now we'll talk a little bit more about Guardians. But yeah, that chick from Diane Ford's in a movie, which is kind of weird. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, Guardians was awesome. I was really on the fence whenever they casted Bradley Cooper as Rocket, because I love Rocket. And I, and I think at one point they were trying to get H. John Benjamin from Archer and Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Uh, I thought that would have been funny to see, like, because I just love his voice. Yeah, Bradley did it. But whenever, whenever I didn't even no. notice it was him. Like, no, I couldn't he, tell he did such a him. good job doing a voice that wasn't the Bradley Cooper yeah. voice. Yeah. Did a character mm -hmm. voice and embodied that character like fantastic. Oh, so compared good. To the comic. I mean, the, the like, there was just that beautiful moment where they're in the prison, mm. all hell's breaking loose. He's standing on top of Groot, and things are going crazy. And Drax throws him a gun, and he, goes, he oh, cocks yeah. that gun, and just oh, he, he's just like. Rocket is here. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, he's here. He's back. He's just like a really well, awesome badass Star Fox. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I actually the moment there's a scene in the movie where Rocket is kind of like a little bit liquored up and emotional and he breaks down mm -hmm. and he gives a speech. So tired of being I called got, like a rodent. I got feels, man. Yeah. I was oh, watching yeah. it being like, I'm feeling Which for this. they were able to do that through a CG character that's an anthropomorphized raccoon. And made, like that's amazing to be able to write and direct and shoot that way where you can get people to feel that way about that kind of a character. Yeah, it was they did a especially comedy stuff like comedic timing mm -hmm. for like CG characters it yeah. was yeah. really good it was really well done also Vin Diesel says like what four words or five words in the whole movie and three well he, then he says <laughs> at the end that two different words oh, yeah, yeah. so he says five words in the movie yeah. and um, Z snaps for that and um, well, he's, great. he's great at that he was the <laughs> he voice was of the Iron Giant he was the voice of the Iron Giant he's I'm really good at saying things and making you cry I love Vin Diesel uh, a awesome, lot yeah. um, but there was a video of him doing the lines he yeah. did all he dubbed all the lines for all the different dubs that's Right, and he wore stilts to the to the thing, to which character. is like to get in character, which is cool, but also a little like. Eh, totally all right, weird. come well, on, we're wearing, you're, like, you're fucking up the VO booth. Yeah, this totally time. Yeah. <laughs> I got my hat. Stop. But he was awesome. I liked. I, well, that Groot was really great too, even though yeah, he didn't have a lot great. of lines. Groot was interesting because <laughs> I didn't know anything about Guardians of the Galaxy. You and about ninety percent of the people saw yeah. the movie, yeah. which is so and, good. And I, honestly, I didn't think the trailers. I, it's to me, the trailers didn't play that well. They felt like they were trying really yeah. hard to be funny, but I didn't actually laugh at them. Yeah, but the was movie was so really, funny. really funny. It felt more like a comedy than a. They were so else. good at running the, li the the line between making you laugh at obscure, silly things, but also bringing the feels out. Like, you know, it never felt too forced. It just felt so. Genuine. Well, yeah. There's only chemistry. one moment in the film where I felt like it was too forced, and then they immediately, when he's got uh, Gamora in his hand, his arms, and then I was like, oh, this is too Twisted much. And it, then yeah. they make it like a joke, and good. you're like, ah, oh, perfect, brought it back. Yeah, no, it was great. They did. They did a this. This movie was kind of like similar. We were talking about they say how mm -hmm. it's like it's very similar to like how they had to adapt Thor where they have these storylines and mm -hmm. worlds that are very weird and hard to like swallow and accept for the person who's not a comic book person like people know Captain America and mm -hmm. people know Spider-Man and it's like oh I know those and I can understand their worlds but it's like Thor with its mythology and Asgard and all that kind of stuff like the way they translated that into the film was genius and they did the exact same like great chemistry with Guardians where you've got all these weird alien races mm -hmm. no one's ever heard of these characters that no one knows nothing about like they literally had barely anything that people knew from the current Marvel Universe in this film mm -hmm. but people still loved it as a huge success and, and that's 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 a sign of like doing I mean, it right there are a couple yeah. times towards the beginning of the movie I was like they're the Zondu's going to the Farkles and they're all <laughs> and, they're, was, and they're mad at the Doonkong. I was sitting next to what? Barbara during the, the movie and about halfway in, like I'm geeking out the whole time, but I was like, Oh, I turned to Barbara I was like, Do you understand what's going on right now? She's like, Yeah, I get what's going on. I was like, Good. Like yeah, there, there's like yeah. a couple moments where you're like you just have to let it go. All just right, well, hold on. Oh, so Ronan they, the Kree is trying to attack the Zandarians <laughs> and Zandar, and they've got the Nova Corps, and then Peter Quill, who's also called Star-Lord, is yeah. like, it's like, <laughs> well, who? <laughs> well, I'm like, I like the little like tree guy. Yeah, yeah, trees right. and raccoons. That's fun. what's That's what's great is that they were able to, like, like someone like me who's a comic book nerd, mm -hmm. like, they appeased me, but then they also made it accessible yeah. to everyone else who knows mm -hmm. nothing about it. And also good uh, guest appearances, guest spots. Glenn uh, Close, John C. Riley. Yeah, I'm not going to say the uh, other There ones, was definitely a lot of cameos. Some I, good cameos. I, I'm a big, uh, so James Gunn, we'll talk about his past here in a bit, but he started with Troma, which is an awful, well, they're, they're like, they're great, but they make bad movies. So when I say awful, I don't mean like they're they're bad. Like they're awfully done, like really like, string, like shoestring budget movies. Troma, like Toxic Avenger and Terra Firmer. Uh, so he did a movie called Tromeo and Juliet back when he was just a, before he'd even written the Scooby-Doo movies, before he'd written the Dawn of the Dead remake. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is back when he was just starting out, but... Uh, Lloyd Kaufman, who's the founder of Troma, actually plays a, an inmate in the movie. Oh yeah. And I heard that I heard word on the street is Nathan Fillion 
is the inmate that gets like impaled by Groot's fingers in the nose. The big CG character, or the big like the the huge guy? Yeah, I hear. He, I hear he, if that if he's either one of the inmates, but someone said that that was him. Well, he. Th I think he was someone that people thought would have made a great Star Lord, considering that's basically his same Firefly, Firefly yeah. character. Yeah. Totally. He was too old for the right. Yeah, Quill's cool, supposed to be pretty young. Well, yeah. so the same reason a lot of people for were kind of hating. Uh, they were kind of hating Gus. <coughs> we're hating on like Guardians of the Galaxy when it first came out. Uh, like it was the reason I I liked the idea of it was because it, it's like this ragtag of these guys shouldn't be together. They like so different, but that's what makes it so awesome. Yeah. And, it, and it kind of felt like that. And I knew James Gunn because I've watched all his movies and I love Slither and I love all his like weird sense of humor. Very and weird director. But so I knew that he was going to make this like Marvel Cinematic Universe, but he was going to make it like kind of dirty, kind of tongue in cheek. There'd be some cuss words like, you know, it was going to be different than the sterile kind of Iron Man and stuff. But even though like Iron Man isn't Spider-Man or Batman either. So Iron Man was a tough sell as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And now what, Iron Man is it's Iron I, yeah, yeah. Man. When it came out, I was like, who's Iron Man? You just got a robot suit? <laughs> John's gonna cry. <laughs> yeah, come on. It's okay. It's, I, I still love you, Chris. Now, I, I think uh, Guardians is a great example of how Marvel set the stage and was able to create this MCU with Iron Man and Captain America and take the real big guns Avengers mm -hmm. and show that we can do that. And now we can actually even do like secondary character groups like, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy, like Ant Man, mm -hmm. like, you know, Doctor Strange that are coming in. People will still go see it because they, the Marvel brand is now synonymous with being just generally a good movie. Yeah. And so people go, like, I don't know who this Groot guy is and why there's a raccoon on top of him. Yeah. But it's a Marvel movie, yeah. and I'll go see it. So I, tr I, I mean, I have trust in Marvel now. I really do. I mean, I'm really bummed that Edgar Wright is not directing Ant Man. So the only reason I ever wanted to see a movie about Ant Man was the fact that Edgar Wright was doing it. But now that he's dropped, and they brought on this guy who directed Yes Man. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the guy that the, okay, so Captain America: The Winter Soldier was this awesome kind of political thriller, and even my mom was like, "Did you see the second Captain America? I you really liked Jersey it." There with it mom, yeah, yeah, my mom. But no, so she loved it. But the whole thing is the guys, that, the two guys that directed ca that Captain America movie, like their resume before then is yeah. not that great. It's like you, me, and Dupree, well, and weird, like you know, weird, not Marvel esque movies. Guardians of the Galaxy is not the movie that you expect from James Gunn. No, not at all. I but now you know. It's funny because James Gunn went on uh, record to say, you know, I always like, I always talk shit about people like George Lucas and Steven Spielberg that revisit their movies and like, you know, fancy him up after a few years. But he said, after doing Guardians of the Galaxy, I can totally see myself wanting to well, do he's that. He's like, he's going crazy about doing Guardians of the Galaxy too. Yeah. He's going and, all And he wants to do, uh, oh, it's, there's, he wants to do this other like series. It's about villains. Uh, I forget who it is, but it's, it's, it's on the internet. You should check it out. I guess t to me with Marvel movies, you, you, you have to just go in being able to be like, all right, this is going to be silly at times, yeah. you know, like, and it's, there's going to be some convenient plot things, of course. but it's going to be fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. they did. They, they, I, I thought mean, they nailed it. No, I, I, that ending credit scene, we won't really give specifics, but we'll just say it's kind of like, it's almost like making fun of you for being like, ah, you thought it's some amazing post credit yeah, scene like, was going to happen. Always nowadays, it's like the post credit. If it's a it superhero movie, yeah, yeah, it's going to be like new character. Yeah. And then it was like, eh, like, no, totally. Got you. you guys so it, aren't talking about the the mixtape, though. The music in that movie was amazing. Really oh, the music good. is really part good. Of the movie was intentional. So the music it kind of is like really good. Yeah. In the movie. It is really, really well done. I did feel like, I won't say spoilers, but I did feel like I saw what was coming with the present, yeah. but it, I still was fine with it when it happened. I no, was like, totally. Eh, I it, knew that was going to happen. All in all, it was a really good movie and I'm excited to see where James Gunn takes these characters. I'm glad that these characters are kind of like household name characters. Now. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, something is, I remember whenever we uh, announced this, this podcast, a lot of people were like, well, it's, they're just going to talk about indie films and obscure, like artsy shit. They're not going to talk and they're going to hate on blockbuster stuff. But like, here's the thing that's funny about that is where do you think those directors come from? Like Gareth Edwards, who did Godzilla, did Monsters. Ryan Johnson, who's doing the next two Star Wars installments after J.J. Abrams, did Brick. And mm -hmm. Brothers Bloom, and like John Looper. and Looper, which is amazing. And John Favreau, who did Iron Man, did he wrote Swingers? Yeah. Do you so, not like Looper? Did you just shake your head at Looper? No, I was. Oh, I, I thought we we're gonna have so, to fight. Stop. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying to the naysayers online that are like, "Oh, it's just gonna be artsy, fartsy stuff," is like, like those directors, a lot of them go off and do great things. Like mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan, like following Memento, those were indie art house films. Mm -hmm. Now Chris Nolan is like the fan geek. God, mm -hmm. so like you got to look to there to see where things are going. So sure. it like movies, like it all merges. So I just wanted to say that. To there all you go. Oh, yeah. And drop the mic. Drop, not boom. your Chris. <laughs> nice. All right. So that's the end. I think we're probably gonna go a few minutes over. We're gonna get, got a few more things to talk about. But that's the end of the movie book club hashtag parentheses whatever we're calling it this week. Yep. 
Uh, so oh. next week, we, or whoever's on the show with me, we're going to sit around, we're going to watch Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which is a really awesome movie directed by George Clooney, written by Charlie Kaufman, got Sam Rockwell playing Chuck Barris, who invented the dating game. Oh, I've seen this movie. It's a great, it's a, it, this guy did a bunch of TV shows, like in the 60s, I believe, 60s and 70s, but he wrote a book way later in life talking about how when he was doing that, he was a spy slash assassin for the CIA, and people don't know if he's bullshitting or not, but this movie plays it like he really is an assassin. So you can check it out. I believe it's on the internet. You can grab DVD. It's called Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. One of my favorite movies of all time. So go check it out. And then next week we'll sit around and we'll talk about it. But uh, also each week we're picking our favorite movies and TV shows that we're digging on right now. You can see the this week's list of films and TV shows from our own Rooster Teeth cast and crew at roosterteeth.com slash screenplay picks. That's right. Anyone who works at this company can suggest a movie or TV show. So go check it out on our website and uh, see what everyone's liking. All right, so we're going to end the show with our question of the week. So my question of the week for you guys is, what was the most embarrassing moment, preferably with your parents, that you've ever had while watching a movie? So I, <laughs> I was in high school, and uh, I... I suggested, I don't know, I couldn't quite, you ever have like where you remember a movie is good, but you don't remember how adult the movie was? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was, it was my boyfriend at the time and his parents, and I was like, you know, we should watch The Long Kiss Goodnight, because I remember this being a great movie. In the first 10 minutes, Sam Jackson says butt fucking, like, probably 10 times. <laughs> and I'm like, just slowly shrinking further and further into my seat. It's my favorite movie. Oh, favorite yeah. butt fucking movie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a butt fucking good time. It was a sound bite for you. <laughs> <laughs> His parents are like staunch Catholics. I just I felt like such an idiot. So yeah. most embarrassing moment for sure. John, uh, mind I didn't have I couldn't think of a specific movie, but I did feel like when like like when I was like a junior higher slash teenager, every time I was watching any movie like just by myself in my 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 in the house like in the living room, like I'd be watching the whole movie. You know how like movies often just have that one love scene or that one sex scene, but the, like has nothing to do with the rest of the movie, and mm -hmm. the movie's like not like that. I felt like every time that scene ever came on when I was watching a movie, that's when a member or my parents would come in <laughs> and just see that. Like I'm just, like watching the entire movie and just this one short scene. They came hey John what do you watch oh what do you do what do you we'll do we'll come that back point? in five what five minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was that just seemed like that was the trend every time I watched a movie that's awesome we'll end with you Chris and uh, we'll end with you and I'll tell mine mine is a uh, mine is a situation where I was lucky enough I didn't have to experience it with my mom but I was like embarrassed for her and kind of through her later you'll see, you see what I mean uh, so there was this movie called slums of Beverly Hills Mm -hmm. uh, with Natasha Lyonne, which most people know from American Pie or But I'm a Cheerleader. Uh, so she's kind of an artsy kind of uh, actress. But there's this movie. It's, got, it's really good. It's got Alan Arkin and David Krumholtz. Uh, anyway, I've been wanting to watch it for forever. Um, and it was on Cinemax or on HBO one time. And I, I was recording it from the VCR. And I had to go meet some friends. So my mom came and she was like, "What do you do? can I watch TV? And I was like, well, just, can you wait till this movie's over? I'm going to let it record. I'm going to watch it later. And she's like, all right. So she sat down and watched the movie while I left. And there's a scene where she discovers kind of a vibrator in the bathroom and she kind of starts kind of experimenting with what's it? kind of a vibrator kind of it's, a kind, vibrator. it's kind of a vibrator it's, a it's like half a vibrator and the other a half it makes phone. potato fries anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'm Groot. <laughs> <laughs> so this scene happens in the movie but the thing is i'm watching this movie later it's been recorded and ejected so i'm in my room watching it so this scene happens and as soon as this scene happens for some reason, the channel just skips like five channels because <laughs> my mom was watching it. That's and then, funny. And, then, and it's like it's like on the Home Shopping Network for like thirty seconds, and then it skips back she to the movie. She censored it, and it, it skips back to the movie, and it, she's still in the bathroom, so she goes back to another <laughs> channel. That's and funny. And then it comes back, and the movie's going on, and I was like, I think I know what happened. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so, Chris, what's yours? I I wanted to go see Scary Movie when it was in theater. You know, First the, one, the, yeah. yeah, the the parody of Scream. And I was like, well, I want to go with my, uh, I, my dad was like, well, it's, you know, rated R, but I'll take you to go see it. And then there was a scene where the girl's pubic hair was getting shaved with a chainsaw. Oh, and I remember right. sitting there and being like, like, it, it wasn't funny in any way because my dad was watching me watch the movie. Uh. And I was just like. <laughs> He's just turning, looking at you. I'm like, as you become a man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> watch it, son. So yeah, that was, that was, the, that was the worst that's horrible. Experience Ugh. ever been in a movie. That's bad. Ugh. Nice. Well, I will have nightmares. On for that you later. note. On yeah. that note. Screenplay. Thank you guys so much for watching our first episode of Screenplay. We'll be back next week, Tuesday. Mr. Me and Mr. Joey Rond will be here. We'll be with another cast, but we'll have you guys on soon enough because you guys are always awesome and great. So check us out and check out the pics on the website, and we'll see you guys next week.